Hi. So this is a video I wanted to make for um, Mukta Pip Jardin, who is uh, my friend and a meditation teacher. Um, we studied the same school of meditation for 30 years together. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the type of meditation it is that um, we focused on. Basically, it's um, a type of meditation which is based on the philosophy of Advait Vedant, which is the philosophy of oneness in one aspect of the Hindu tradition. And um, it especially focuses on the formless reality, which is consciousness. And the idea is that when you close your eyes, your senses are dampened, certainly sight, which is the most dominant sense, is um, closed off. And then, of course, um, you know, some people like to use earplugs, but um, it's basically to diminish the amount of sensory stimulus that you're experiencing so that you can work with the remaining fifth sense, which is the mind. And uh, or is that the sixth sense? Anyway, <laughs> I think the sixth sense is what we're getting to. Um, so basically, then the most tricky sense is the subtlest sense, which is the mind, which um, continually will try to involve you in thoughts and especially to drag you into thoughts which are positive or negative and so if you meditate for the first time you'll probably find yourself just um, ruminating over actually more often negative things but um, also possibly positive memories you might try to relive a positive memory or you might get into an old argument in your head or something like that or you'll start thinking about the things that you have to do um, because the mind is kind of actually at that point plot plotting to get out of meditation uh, because meditation if you keep going with it it's the state when the mind goes to sleep or gets dissolved and in that state the mind doesn't look forward to its own dissolution so it tends to try to get you back into the waking state into the state of engaging with objects winning winning and losing sensory stimulus the pairs of opposites so um, in order to tackle this phenomenon of the mind constantly trying to drag you out of meditation what we do is we distract it with um, a technique. Now there are three techniques that we focused on in our school. Uh, one was watching the breath, just watching it go in and out and in and out. And if that's not sort of stimulating enough for your mind, then you can make a game out of observing the nuances in your breath. Like does it catch? Is it slow? Is it fast? Is it deep? Is it? And you don't try to influence your breath. You just see how it is when it flows naturally. And that same principle of neutral observation, it can then be applied to um, your own thoughts. You can watch them come and go as if, as if they're nothing significant. They're not, you're not invested in them. You're not biased in favor of one thought or prejudice against another thought. Um, that's a hard technique though as compared to the breath one and then there is uh, what a lot of people find is that it is difficult to do either of those because they're very subtle and your your mind tends to have a louder voice and so they keep getting distracted and then frustrated so um, you can give your mind something to do and uh, Usually, this is where mantra comes in, the idea of repeating a word over and over again. Um, 
because it tends to take a lot of concentration to do that and then your mind is less likely to have an opportunity to bring in thoughts from the outside um, and there are many mantras finally um, the technique that I discovered with Mukta actually which was from a different kind of school of thought than the one that we were studying was through painting and what I discovered was that when we did this painting um, we had to go into a state of in order to be able to paint freely because the the object of the game was to paint freely without sort of ego and um, in order to do that we had to let go of any attachment to what we were going to produce and uh, and it took me a while when I first started this kind of painting I didn't really think of it as a meditation but the more I did it the more I realized that it was and um, I have recently been implying sort of applying that same technique in meditation with the thoughts which is basically to let go of any product even in the meditation itself and any idea of achieving something but really just to um, sit there and see what happens the same way that you might I don't know watch birds like the same sort of concentration that people go into when they're when scientists are studying something they have to be completely in a neutral state of mind in order to gather all the data and all the information and so you apply that same kind of neutral but very engaged and alert state of consciousness in order to um, do the experiment and and so and it's very tricky because your mind wants to get involved in the process and then take ownership of the process and then I mean if you start transcending the mind will actually try to almost um, patent the transcendence oh we're doing well and then it'll start commenting and then that actually kind of um, sabotages <laughs> your transcendence but uh, I mean these are just things that I have observed in doing it and I think that everyone's perspective is a little bit different and the way we were taught by our teacher was that you're not meant to give any of that any significance there's no, no such thing as a good or bad meditation and um, he didn't advise us to focus so much on transcendence versus non-transcendence it was really just a matter of sitting down and going through the process of observing And um, so, yeah, I have always been hugely inspired by Mukta and her incredibly free spirit. After we did that painting, she did some paintings, which I wonder if she will ever um, make them a part of her meditation teaching program. But um, she would go on these walks and from memory, she would make these kind of um, landscapes. I cannot do a landscape from memory, so I was always hugely admiring of this. And this was a talent that emerged kind of spontaneously when we were painting. She, she didn't learn technique or study anything in particular. It just, we started doing this meditation painting and it came out. And, um, and she would paint these almost negative image inverted colors of landscapes that were like, otherworldly and incredibly evocative like I mean you've seen like impressionist landscapes and I don't know maybe they, they evoke different things for different people but for me this was really different this was really it wasn't just a pretty picture it was I felt like I was there and I could feel this sort of feeling of um, profound well what I felt when I looked at them was like a profound longing to be there but um, the atmosphere of the places that she were was depicting was comfort extremely comforting and at the same time scintillating I guess like not not boring at all anyway um, so I just I wanted to appreciate her painting also and and say that um, 
I could really see the benefit of meditation and, and the profundity of, of that state of meditation in her paintings when I was looking at them, almost like looking at them put me into a state of meditation. So that was really amazing. And I'm going to leave this video there because I have rambled on for, well, 10 minutes. So that's pretty good. And um, blessed, blessed be and love and light.